It will haunt you every night. Whatever it is, no one should have to encounter that kind of evil. Except you girls, I think you can handle it. Oh, oh good, thanks. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Government's trying to claim the event isn't supernatural. We don't want a panic. We don't want mass hysteria. Get out of the city! Get out of the city! Good morning and good afternoon, movie lovers all around the world. This is your boy, Testify to the Music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21 bringing you another movie review. And today, we're going to be reviewing the 2016 remake of Ghostbusters. All right. So, right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions that I already know that everybody's going to have going into this review. Uh, again, this is going to be non-spoilers, so you don't have to worry about me spoiling anything. Uh, anything dealing with the plot or how the characters develop or anything. You don't have to worry about me spoiling any of that or any of the jokes. Uh, I have a non-spoilers review that should be coming out sometime later on this afternoon uh, with my buddy Red Dog. You guys check that out. If you want to go ahead and be spoiled right ahead, there are going to be a link in the description to the actual spoilers review once it releases. So you can just wait around until that link post. Uh, otherwise, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first question that I know everybody's going to ask me, was this a good film? Yes. Yes, it was a good film. It had some great moments in it, and it was very funny. Question number two, how did the female leads do, and did it work for the story? Yes, it did. It, yes, they carried the film very well. They were a crucial part of the story. I really enjoyed three out of the four main characters, but yes, they did work very well, and they served the story very well, and it fit around them very well. And each one, it explained why they're a part of this team and what they contribute to this team. All right, so question number three that everybody's waiting to hear, is this as good as the original? No. I know some people wanted me to say yes, and, I, and a lot of you are like cheering and saying, hey, I'm glad he said no. No, look. I kind of wanted this to be better than the original simply because it, this movie has been getting so much flack and so much crap, you know, thrown at them just because, oh, it's an all female cast. We didn't call for a Ghostbusters remake. How dare they do this? The director, Paul Feig, needs to be shot. These women aren't going to be able to live up to what Bill Murray and the rest of the cast. All of that going on and all that hate going on. And, and I don't understand why. I, like I said, when I went into the film, I had just watched the original Ghostbusters not too long ago before I went and saw this. And so I was like, why is everyone throwing so much hate at this film? There's nothing necessarily wrong with the film. But no, no, it is not as good as the original. So all right, let's dive into some things. Again, this is gonna be non-spoiler, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'll be as vague as possible without spoiling the film. So what you have uh, in this film is you have new characters uh you have leslie jones character you have melissa mccarthy's character you have kate mckenna's character and then of course you also have the lovely and very pretty Kristen wig character and so what they are is they essentially form this team which you know are the ghostbusters and they fight ghosts and kick their butts just like the original one um but the way they're introduced is very unique First, we're introduced into Kristen Wiig's character, followed by Melissa McCarthy's character, followed by Kate McKenna's character, and then finally we're introduced to Leslie Jones's character a little ways through the beginning of the film. And they all work very well together. The chemistry between them was great. Like I said, three out of the four of them worked for this film. Kate McKenna, I felt, was like too cartoonish. It... It just seemed like she was just trying to be a little bit over the top in every single scene that she was in. And even the scenes where they're just sitting there and they're being serious, straight up, you know, having a, a normal adult conversation with people. She's sitting there in the background just <laughs> making weird faces going on. It's kind of like, what? What are you doing? No. See, there's a difference between being eccentric and over the top eccentric. If she was a little eccentric, that's fine. That's fine. But she was a little over the top eccentric. And I don't think she was necessarily trying to steal scenes away from her other three co-stars. 
but it just seemed like every time they were in a scene, she had to be so cartoonish and eccentric, and like she had to just be the, you know, the main focus of what was going on. So I didn't mind her beginning. In the beginning, I didn't mind. I didn't mind in the beginning, but after a while, I was just like, okay, now you're becoming a cartoon character. I said, oh, but I, I just turned and looked at my buddy and said, okay, I'm pretty sure Bugs and Daffy are about to come out of Cartoon Land and tell them, hey, 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 stop stealing our bits. You're acting like a cartoon character. You're not a cartoon character. You're a human being. So I just feel like she was possibly given a different script than what everybody else was gifting. Her acting was just like way up there. Um, and moving on to uh, Chris Hemsworth. I liked him in the film. Uh, he was a big dum dum in this film. I didn't mind that at all. You know, it's something different. He's not being Mr. Macho uh, action adventure guy like he is with Thor and the in the movie that he was in this past December. You know, it, it was something different. You know, so it gave Chris Hemsworth the ability to just be a big dum dum, and so that's exactly what he was. He was there to be a big dum dum and be eye candy for the Ghostbusters because that's why they hired him because he's hot. And hey. That it worked fine, but at certain points it did get a little aggravating. Like, okay, you can't be that dumb. There is a phone ringing. Why don't you answer it? Oh, I don't hear the phone. Wait, what? Uh, uh, I'm not listening. And you cover up your eyes. You, you, you. Okay, uh, there's a line between being dumb and being super dumb. And I felt at parts they had Chris Hemsworth character being super dumb. And I don't know if this is on Chris Hemsworth or this is on the director Paul Feig. But really, yeah, his being too dumb didn't work for me. In the first half, I was fine with it. But once we got towards the end, I was like, okay. But he did get to have a little couple of action scenes. But I'll get more into that during my spoilers review that I got coming out later on this afternoon. All right, so moving on, let's talk about a few of the callbacks from the original film. And personally, they worked for me, but I felt you could have taken a few of them out. Uh, again, I didn't mind some of the cameo appearances and callbacks from the original film. I'm not going to go into detail again, because once again, this is a non-spoilers review. But some of them seemed very out of place, and it seemed like they almost stopped the film. Um, but then certain ones really did fit, and they did make it organic and, and I really like that but with all that being said I can say that I really did walk out of this film feeling happy and free and I really did enjoy it and it was really funny in certain moments it made me laugh uh, I got to say that I, ca I can't stress that enough this film had me laughing the entire time especially the first two acts I was laughing falling out of my chair even though Kate McKenna was acting like a cartoon character, she was funny in certain scenes because she's just that eccentric and it, it was funny. And again, I got to stress enough how these characters flow very well together and they were just able to go bit after bit after bit after each other. They were able to play off of each other and that's what you want to see actors do when it comes to certain films like this, especially when it's comedy heavy. And you have everybody who has like a background what off of Saturday Night Live and you do these sketch comedies. You want to have someone that's very funny and the characters and the actors have to be able to play off to each other and they also have to fit into the story that's put there organically. And they do and they're able to play off each other very well. So in that aspect, it gets an A++. I can't stress that enough. It was super, super funny. Again, there were some jokes that were hit and miss. And I know if you saw the trailer and the jokes didn't work for you, I'm pretty sure they'll work better for you once you see the film. Those trailers that they put out in the TV spots, awful. Absolutely awful. They don't work. They don't complement what the story is about. You have to see them in the context to get the joke. Like Leslie Jones's joke about when she dives off the stage and no one catches her. She's like, I don't know if it was a woman thing or a black thing. I just know I'm mad. See, seeing that out of context, okay yeah it seems a little dumb but once you see that in the context of the film it works and especially once you know and understand and have met her character and know what her personality is like it works better so getting to a score for this film uh, I'm gonna give this a three and a half out of five 
it was a great film. It, yes, it wasn't as good as the original. The original stands on its own. I did a review of that yesterday for my new segment, Throwback Thursday Reviews, and I gave that a 5 out of a 5. And the original Ghostbusters deserves its 5 out of a 5. And again, I'm in no way, shape, or form bashing this new film. I loved it. I thought it was a great film. I highly recommend it, especially in 3D. If you feel like spending the money, I say watch it in 3D because it looks so cool in 3D because the ghosts are coming off the screen. And then you have the little particle streams. They're coming off as well off the screen. So it looks like you're there in the movie and it looks like they're actually coming at you. I highly recommend checking that out. Again, the negatives, Chris Hemsworth was just a little too dumb. Kate McKinnon was acting like a cartoon character, being a little too eccentric. Oh, and I almost forgot about the villain. Well, he wasn't that really that memorable, so. I'll talk about more what he did in the uh, spoilers review. Uh, let's just say uh, this character was utterly pointless. Uh, his reasoning for doing what he was doing was dumb and stupid. Again, I don't want to spoil too much of that, but yeah, he's kind of forgettable. No offense to Paul Feig or to the actor who was playing him. You're just kind of a forgettable character. You're not that great of a villain. So, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely highly recommend the film. Again, I give it a three and a half out of five. Or, if you want to put it in layman's terms, a 3.5 out of five. I say it's a great recommend. This is something that you can take your kids to and laugh out loud to. There's absolutely no cursing, pretty much. I think there might have been like a few references that might have not been necessarily for kids. But other than that, this is something you can take your kids to. And if it, some of the jokes will go over their heads, but a lot of the jokes are going to be really funny. Again, I love the new leads that they have, um, especially uh, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, and Melissa McCarthy. And again, I liked Kate McKinnon in the beginning of the film, but then after a while, I just got a little tired of the cartoon antics. And that's no way, you know, saying that, hey, don't go see this just because she's a cartoon character or because Crimson Hurts Words is a big dummy. No, I'm not saying that at all. Like I said, the first and second half worked really well for me. It was really good stitched together. There were certain parts that I felt like could have been directed a little bit better. And I will make this comparison too. If you like Bridesmaids, and you like that kind of humor again that's rated r humor and this is pg-13 humor but it still has some of the callbacks and beats to bridesmaids as well as the original ghostbusters combined together if you like that type of directing and like that slapstick stuff then you're really going to enjoy this but if that slapstick kind of kind of gets on your nerves like what they somewhat do on saturday night live then you're not going to enjoy this film at all but again, I recommend you check it out. Don't listen to what the critics are saying necessarily. Hey, you don't even have to listen to what I'm saying. Again, these are my opinions. And again, movies affect people in different ways. For me, I enjoyed the film. I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty good for being a remake of its time. I understand what they were trying to do here. I didn't mind the female leads again. I didn't mind them rebooting it again. I commend Paul Feig for what he was trying to do. He was making a stand here saying that, look, I have four talented women and they can carry a film. And yes, they carried the film very well. You could have taken Chris Hemsworth out and some of the other characters out. And it still would have worked. But guys, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Have you seen Ghostbusters yet? Do you plan to go see Ghostbusters this weekend? And if you do... Are you going to let the critics, you know, influence your decision? Or are you going to go into this with an open mind? I recommend you go into this with an open mind. Get all the critics out of your head. Uh, if you want to, you can go back and watch the original Ghostbusters just to kind of see some of the callbacks that they have when they make cheap cameo appearances from the characters from the original. Just because you might miss a few of them. But then if you go back and watch it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember blank, 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 blank. Oh, yeah, blank, 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 blank was in there. So I recommend going and watching the original and then seeing this one. Again, it's something you can bring your kids to. It's mild language in it. Uh, there are some scary scenes in there, you know, with the ghosts. These ghosts do look really creepy. I know in the original Ghostbusters, they look more comical. In this one, they look very horrific, and they look like something ripped straight out of a, a horror film. So, yeah. Kudos to Paul Feig on that. Again, I commend him for what he was trying to do with this film. And I highly recommend you go check it out. 
but again let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this review and if you've seen the movie let me know what you think of it and also let me know what you think of this all-female led cast i'm curious to know about all of that again you can follow me on all the social media sites at i am testify including facebook twitter instagram soundcloud my official website tumblr follow me on all of those i also make sure i have links to those in the description below also make sure you ask me some questions down in the comment section below because i will be gearing up for uh, testify q a number two here soon i mean i'd love to get some questions from feedback from you guys about how i'm doing with these movie reviews and just as a youtuber in general also make sure you stay tuned later on i'll have my spoilers review coming up with my buddy red dog gonna sit there and take this film and break it down piece by piece and talk about what we like what we didn't like and break down these characters the scenes how they complement each other how the ghosts fit in how the villain works in this film and we're going to talk about all of that and more so tune in for that also make sure you go follow my video partner Dez hd i got a link to his channel down below i highly recommend you go also go check out trev's chan too he does all things walking dead along with game of thrones coverage as well so I recommend you go follow them. But thank you so much for tuning into this video. Thank you so much for lasting this long. I'm testified to the music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21, saying peace out.